moving minion. <laughs> I can't, why can't I say that? Um, okay, something a little different today as we step through one of my little talks that I had to give recently. Um, it was sort of sprung on me on the topic of serious games. Serious games being games that are based around educating or training the player or players on a particular topic. Um, so it's basically like learning through play, which is a really interesting area of game design that um, I've sort of dipped my toe in, but also want to explore some more as well. So I had to give a little talk about my own experience with myself and my students. Um, so let's get cracking. Serious games, here we go. So uh, for those who don't know, um, I'm Jez and I'm, a found, I'm the founder of First Coding. So what I do, I go out into schools and colleges and other organizations and sort of uh, provide creative coding classes. Uh, I'm able to support schools as well through an alternative provision program, um, as well as host on-site and off-site uh, coding clubs, which is excellent. And uh, I'm currently, as it stands now, at the time of recording, in my seventh year of doing this. And it's it really is interesting. Even now, every day is different. I can, I can uh, honestly say that. Uh, we, I also do GCSE computer science tuition as well. All of this, by the way, when I'm not on site on schools, at schools, all of this goes on underground in one of the city's uh, converted underground war bunkers. So it's a World War II bunker that got upgraded during the Cold War and then was derelict before the council then renovated it. So there's classrooms down there, there's music studios, gaming rooms, and where I live, uh, a computer lab. So that's where I teach when I'm not in schools. Also do school talks down there, so you can see we've got various uh, classes going going on. This is just one of the rooms in the bunker underground, and we're we're, we're getting people interested in game design, uh, but not putting them off by um, by. Uh, uh, by um, giving them too much to process as well. So we like to gently ease people in and, and as you can see here we're using we're using uh, the likes of Scratch which is a great platform. Um, there's only one problem with Scratch that it has a bit of a has a bit of an image problem doesn't it? It's very bright and colourful, has a cartoony cat for it um, but uh, and most people have only experienced it during primary school so people instantly think and myself included at one point that scratch was just really for for younger kids but actually it's not you can do so much more with it and it's and it's a really good gateway into um, other programming language uh, programming languages so it can really springboard uh, a person's interest into into game design and coding as a bit of a practice, we entered some uh, uh, game jams, and one in particular, the Global Game Jam, was uh, a really interesting one this year. Um, you get given a, a theme and a, a, a compressed amount of time to be able to build something. So it was just like practicing, getting us in the right frame of mind in order to uh, in order to put together a few basic concepts and polish as much as we can within the time that we, we had left. Uh, this year's topic, or last year's, was uh, Roots. So we devised a few games based on based on the topic of Roots. But the one thing that really, really hit home about the Global Game Jam is that they make it inclusive and accessible for all. And I think that's really important, especially when we're looking at how we can build our own serious games that uh, educate and train people of all ages and abilities. So yeah, accessibility is a huge, huge important thing that uh, I think often gets overlooked, but it's definitely one which I'm tra uh, teaching my pupils to, to, to really consider as one of the most important, um, um, and most important points when planning. So we put together, after a bit of practice with a few uh, game jams, uh, we put together an idea, okay? Now, um, whatever we were to make, it was important that uh, we made it, okay? The amount of people I've seen who have been put off 
by uh, comparing their work with other people's and just binning it or abandoning it, in it abandoning it, abandoning it, ab um, uh, abandoning it. <laughs> God, so why can't I say that? Um, giving up. Um, is is uh, uh, surprisingly high. So what I like to uh, encourage is people to to finish a project, get a project across the finish line. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to make anything perfect, to be honest. You, well, we just have to make it, as we can see on this slide here. We just have to make it and finish it. Uh, building from scratch in scratch. So we had this idea and we were going to look at different ways in which we could build it. Uh, some uh, students in our group were more experienced than others. Some liked artwork, uh, some preferred to code. So we had a, a real mixture of um, abilities and interests. So we thought everyone's familiar with scratch. So we were going to, go, we were going to start building it. Um, in Scratch. So the game concept, it was um, about uh, radio communication. We we're going to educate people um, in the concept of amateur radio. Okay, so maybe we've got uh, Agent 1 uh, on one side of the world and Agent 2 on the other. So we're going to try and build a game that taught the player how uh, some of the basic radio concepts and principles based around uh, amateur radio and number stations. We're going to use repeaters as well, so these are, these are uh, um, things that allow us to boost our signal. So basically it takes an incoming signal and uh, basically transmits it over. So it allows you to broadcast over the horizon. Um, incidentally, the ISS, the space station above us, is a, is a repeater as well. So you can absolutely transmit uh, a signal to the ISS and it will come down. On the, on the other side of the world, which is really interesting, really, really interesting. All these little concepts were, were served as great hooks for the uh, students' uh, interest. It really, really got them learning more about the about the subject. Incidentally, uh, a couple, one being a, a girl as well, which is which is awesome because it's a male-dominated uh, hobby. Let's be honest. Um, they they were uh, really threw themselves into it and started reading up on the topic. And one in particular is even training for their um, for their exam, uh, for their license exam, which is brilliant. So we had our scratch game, but it didn't look the part on screen. So what we've done is well, we've built a uh, a prop for want of a better word. We built a prop. So as you can see here, we we made it look like a, um, a, a 1960s computer terminal because, um, and we gave it that feel as well of, of a sort of retro feel with, with using the, 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 the fonts and the like. And through, through this prop, the player was able to communicate with the game, learning about amateur radio as they go along. We formed a testing team as well. So our testing team was, uh, again, a group of children who weren't um, uh, interested in, in the actual coding part or maybe the art part, but they wanted to still contribute, which is really good. So we did, uh, we formed a testing team. So their, um, their main role was uh, tweaking and designing the levels, which were puzzles, by the way. We did puzzles, but, and you had to sort of, as you completed the puzzles along the way, you assembled your radio bit by bit. Uh, level balancing, which is really important. Were some of the levels too difficult, or were the jump from like level two to three too great? We wanted a we wanted a gradual progression throughout the game, and that governed game pace as well. So, it, um, does the pace of the game is it is it a, is it a nice gentle pace, or, is it, or does it appear rushed in certain parts? Also, loading times as well. Um, there was um, there's some really big assets in there. Um, that take a while to, to load in and the, the delay uh, in loading was quite noticeable. So this testing team did something really clever. They went online and they looked at um, case studies and they found um, uh, lifts. They found this, this, this case study to do with uh, elevators or lifts. Um, they were taking too long and people were complaining they were taking too long. So what the lift company did, they didn't overhaul um, 
the the lift and the, the motor to, to get it working quicker, what they did, they put something in the in the lift itself to distract the person riding in the elevator. And they didn't notice them. Once they're distracted, they didn't notice how long the journey uh, took. And this was brilliant. So they were able to suggest, and we did use the same concept here. We distracted the player um, just uh, just enough to allow um, certain assets on, on certain levels to time to load in and yeah nobody really noticed which is which was awesome and this um, is uh, something I'm so impressed with yeah so never underrate your testing team they may be brutal in their feedback trust me the this these guys were brutal in what they what they fed back to us but um, they serve a really important purpose and they can come up with some brilliant ideas um, for with, with with fresh pairs of eyes looking looking in so yeah testing teams brilliant uh, on our journey well we were looking at ways in which we could code um, code things we actually came across uh, a coding language called um, Rockstar so Rockstar allows you to um, code programs using as lyrics to to rock ballads which sounds completely bonkers but really cool and a few of us threw ourselves in and i guess we're now we're we're now official rock star developers i guess but um part of the game because the idea was we were going to bounce our signal off the moon um we needed to track lunar cycles in real time so you can only play the game or or successfully complete the game um, should the moon in real time above your head be in the correct alignment um, long story long story short i know but um, we needed to track the lunar cycles in real time uh, which we did in scratch but also believe it or not <laughs> this um this verse here is written in the rockstar code and it actually <laughs> tracks in real time uh, the lunar cycles as well and we actually experimented a bit with putting this to music so um, I, I don't I'm not going to sing it to you um, but um, you get the idea you get the idea now this was really cool and again something I would love to um, love to explore some more so what does the process of making a serious game what 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 points can we take away or what did we discover well myself and the class um, found that it opens up different channels of creativity like I mentioned before some like the artwork some like the coding some like the testing and the feedback and the level design you can you can um, you can really uh, benefit from having a group with a variety of skills and interests most definitely uh, we also learned that learning through play is really powerful a really important way to learn something um, incidentally <coughs> some of the children have um, and, and some of the students have um, a problem with concentration um, and that's okay it's 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 something we were able to work with but we found that when they were playing a game um, it's almost as if the part of the brain that distracts them from concentrating um, is in itself distracted through through the gameplay and we noticed their ability to retain information um, and remember things was greatly enhanced whilst they were playing a game um, I'm not an expert in this field I haven't even uh, read up uh, or followed it through this this finding but it's something that we observed and uh, maybe it's maybe it's something we that we could pursue and investigate further um, it offered the process of designing a serious game offered uh, insights into mechanics of how things work not only from a game perspective but things out in the real world for example radios repeaters and, and just general uh, radio communication the topic of radio communication as a whole that was really interesting and it created conversations and collaborations. It got us meeting people. We went out and did some research as well. And we met uh, various radio operators and amateur radio stations. Um, and it became um, our little group, um, became, um, 
worked really well together and we're still working together even now through weekly gaming nights um, but we're also reaching out to the local college especially now that we have a really uh, hard-working testing team that's really interesting and we're reaching out to local colleges to be able to um, uh, offer our testing and feedback services and that is something I'm most proud of of my students they've actually we've actually built a game we finished it we entered it in the competition uh, and now um, it's leading us into uh, all sorts of different avenues and meeting meeting new people so yeah that is uh, a, a little talk I had to cobble together really quickly on the making of serious games so yeah hope you enjoy it hope you're inspired um, drop me uh, a line with any questions you might have Okay, take care now. See you later.